Oh, hey. How's it going? I didn't see you there. You're probably wondering why I look like I got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. Well, it's because I just got done shaving with my needlessly expensive over-the-top shaving gizmo. And boy, is it just such a hassle. If only there was a way to shave that didn't leave your face looking like the desecrated remnants of a dark sacrifice. <sighs> if only, if only. It's your local ah! That's right, this video is sponsored by our good friends over at Dollar Shave Club. Don't worry about that other guy, he's fine, I swear. I love working with these guys because they allow you guys to get this Chris, the better Chris, instead of this goblin Chris that you see before ye. Dollar Shave Club has got all your grooming needs covered, from showering to oral care to obviously shaving. It's in the name, idiot. And between you and me, you're looking a little ragged. So why not get your hands on a shave starter set? Look at all the shit in here! It comes with this premium, weighty executive handle and six high-quality blades! Look at this, guys. Doesn't this look welcoming beyond reason? Doesn't it just give off an aura of friendliness? This, on the other hand, is practically a fucking weapon! Look at how Tom Sweeney recoils in fear at the mere sight of it. That's not funny. That's not funny. That's not funny. That's not funny. Get the fuck back. Get the fuck back. It also comes with a three ounce tube of Dr. Carver's shave butter, which uh, if you didn't already know was a fucking godsend. For a limited time, new members can get their first month of the executive razor with a tube of their Dr. Carver's shave butter for only $5. After that, the restock box ships regular sized products at a regular price. So what are you waiting for, dumbass? Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash raygun to get your first starter set for just $5. You idiot, you dolt, you daft you idiot. Once again, that's dollarshaveclub.com slash raygun. Thanks again for sponsoring, guys. I fucking love you. You're the best. On with the video. Hey, every- Aw, oh, I hit the mic. Damn it. I can't use that. I can't use that take. That's fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Shit. Hey, everybody. It me, Chris Raygun. I just got back from watching Joker starring Zhao Quinn Phalanx, and boy, is my society tired. I don't think I've ever seen so much fear-mongering over a movie like I have with this fucking thing. I've watched this movie three times already, and I remember on my final viewing, I was heading home, and I was unloading a, a full round of pistol ammo into this old elderly woman who was simply looking for a diner. And I remember thinking to myself as I was gunning this poor innocent woman down on the street in cold blood, uh, you know, uh, that movie really wasn't as violent uh, as the media made it out to be. It's definitely a shocking movie, it's definitely an uncomfortable and unsettling movie, but not in a, in a way that's really going to inspire violence. You should definitely see it, by the way. My opinion, I loved it, but that's just me. I don't know, man, there was just a lot of manufactured outrage about this movie, and like everybody, p like people on, uh, on CNN and other garbage news outlets talking about how uh, the movie was going to inspire mass killings, and how like uh, theaters uh, showing the Joker were gonna, get sh were gonna get shot up because the Joker inspires these kinds of things. None of them happened, by the way, no violence, no shootings of any kind, uh, so I'm sure all the news people are really bummed about that. How am I supposed to advertise needlessly expensive pharmaceuticals when I don't have any dead kids to exploit? Honestly, the very idea that this movie would inspire violence, like, that, that entire premise was faulty from the beginning. Grand Theft Auto has been letting people partake in violent fantasies for a generation now. And no violence has ever come from that. Not to mention in film, we've had a long history of movies like this. We've had, we've had Psycho, we've had Taxi Driver, we've had Monster, shows like Dexter and Breaking Bad. All of which are stories that center around protagonists that are either evil, villainous, murderous or psychopathic. I'm going to be a little bit conspiratorial here, I hope you'll allow me that. I don't necessarily believe this, but I'm, I'm struggling to think of any other reason. I feel like the only reason people are going after this movie specifically is because the director Todd Phillips recently gave an interview about how much he hates woke culture and how much it, how, how difficult it is to make comedy uh, when everything needs to be woke all the time. So naturally you've got to find some extreme negative consequence to anything the guy does, even if his fucking movie is a left-wing movie about the importance of mental health care and how terrible the rich are. Whoa, it's almost as if all these articles came out before the movie was out and no one actually fucking saw the movie. Like you you serious like you couldn't be further off from what the movie is. Like it's a, it's it's impressive. So needless to say, we've got a fucking smorgasbord of amazing hot takes from the media about Joker that I'm positive will amuse you. And don't worry, I've chosen these articles very specifically so as to not spoil anything for the people who want to see the movie. Although there are some articles that I'm going to be talking about briefly here that I think I might want to get into in the future in spoiler videos. Uh, if, you're, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Uh, I'm just kind of experimenting with the channel right now. 
Our good friends over at CNN cast the first stone with this gem. The true appeal of the new Joker movie lies in its invidious validation of the white male resentment that helped bring President Trump to power. A political parable for our time. When I saw Joker, my friends and I talked about the movie for days after we saw it because there was so much in the movie to dissect and give your own interpretation on. There's so much to talk about with this movie. You really don't have to reach this hard. What's that saying about how, like, uh, the opposite of hate isn't love, and how hate and love are basically the same thing, and the opposite of hate and love is indifference? This, this shit really reminds me of that, because they, they talk about Trump so much, they, they, they hate him so much, that they're willing to taint everything that they see with his fucking imagery. They try so hard to force him into aspects of their lives that have nothing to fucking do with them. It's, it's borderline fanaticism. I don't like Trump at all. I don't like Trump as far as I could throw him. The guy's like a fat dumbass. But holy shit, he's not relevant here at all. Just calm your fucking titties down. This, rem this reminds me of that Onion video where they're reviewing Christopher Robin. Christopher Robin, now an overworked husband and father, as he reconnects with Pooh, Tigger, and all of the other denizens of Hundred Acre Wood in what I can only see is a stirring parable about the dangers of the Trump administration because in this day and age, it's impossible for me to talk about it through literally any other lens. Everything is about Trump and nothing isn't. That's the world we live in now. Holy shit. I really, I really, really hope he loses next year because holy shit, I, I can't take much more of this. I can't take it. Joker at its core is the story of the forgotten man, the metaphoric displaced and disenfranchised white man whose goodwill has been abused and whose status has been reduced. A man who has been crushed underfoot by the elite, dragged down by equally demanding feminists and climbed over by upstart non-white and immigrant masses. Not a single plot point in this movie has anything to do with immigration, immigrants, feminists, least of all. He's not like an incel. Like, I know that that was the thing. It's like, oh, it's just an incel power fantasy. Dude's not an incel. He could give, he, he couldn't care less. This dude has to be straight up delusional. He's seeing things. Jeff Yang, listen, are you seeing things? Because if so, I've got a movie for you. The real threat of Joker is hiding in plain sight. Make sure to put the words threat and uh, Joker in the headlines there, guys. Grab us some of those clicks. Do they real? Do they not realize that this is kind of great advertising for the Joker? Like, everybody's gonna be like, ooh, the Joker's pretty dangerous, huh? We should see that. Maybe this is all some shadow advertising for, for the movie. Maybe, maybe all these articles are fake and it's just to drum up uh, interest in the movie. Uh, and maybe I'm just playing into their hands. In which case, I'm totally fine with it because I liked it. So, hey, whatever, go see it. What the film wants to say about mental illness and class divisions in society is not as interesting as, as what it accidentally says about whiteness. Have you noticed that the more evil the Joker gets, the more white his skin gets? How sad is it that the Nostalgia Critic's review of The Wall is more of a substantive critique of the material than this is of the Joker? What the fuck? If the movie didn't make people crazy, Certainly this will, for it is essentially a depiction of what happens when white supremacy is left unchecked. It shows the delusions that many white men have about their place in society and the brutality that can result when that place is denied. I, whoa. We're, we're veering into a kind of dangerous territory here where we're just kind of making the statement now that if a villain is white, He's inherently a white supremacist because white supremacy is villainous and the character is white. This is a weird place to go. Dr. Octopus, white supremacist. Syndrome, white supremacist. Uh, green Goblin, Norman Osborn, white supremacist. Don't matter if he's half green. And don't even get me started on this guy. This guy's obvious. Like, I, come on. That, th this man is the shape of racist. The Joker isn't a white supremacist. I, I should not need to say that. Uh... He is not a stand-in for the concept of white supremacy. I I feel like a retard having to say this. There are so many ways to read the movie that that make more sense than this. Like I, I kind of read it as, hey, this this is a movie about uh, mental health and how people who try to get help often aren't 
given uh, easy ways to get that help. And when they do get that help, sometimes the funding is cut. Sometimes it's it, the processes by which they're able to get that help are made more complicated than they need to be. There's a, there's a, there's so many ways to read this movie that make more sense than fucking this. Time Magazine chimes in as well. You know Time Magazine, upstanding publication. In Joker, black women are visible, but they are not seen. Ah, this is weird. The article's, the article's talking about black women, yet they use the picture of a rainy window. Ah, weird. That's such, such a bizarre choice. This particular one is full of spoilers. Uh, maybe I'll do a spoiler video like I said earlier, but, uh... It's, it's as dumb as it sounds. Joker uses a song by convicted pedophile Gary Glitter. He's probably making money off of it. The controversy keeps building for Warner Brothers' Joker movie. Yeah, almost as much as the box office. It's important to note the probably in the headline there because it, it comes into play pretty much immediately. The master recording is typically owned by the recording company. But say he, this is like some, some attorney that they contacted to talk about the story with, said it's possible that the rights have reverted back to glitter. They don't even fucking know. It's possible. Wow, epic journalism. Jeez, I don't know. It's possible that the founder of CNN took numerous flights on Jeffrey Epstein's pedophile plane. Who knows? Who the fuck knows? It's possible. I have no way to corroborate that, but it's possible. Beyond the leap here, I, I don't even see why people give a shit. Jeffrey Epstein was the basically the president of Sex Crimes, Inc. He was murdered in a maximum security prison cell, presumably because 90% of the celebrities that you know and love are probably diddling kids. Maybe Lady Gaga isn't. I'm willing to probably make that bet, but even I can't be sure of that. And that's not to say you shouldn't care if someone's a pedophile or not. Obviously you should, but it's a, it's a song. John Lennon was a wife beater. Does that make Imagine any less powerful than it is? I don't really, th I don't really think of it that way. There's a separation of the art versus the artist discussion happening pretty much every day on the internet because of all the shit that constantly comes out about people. And in some cases, I understand where something is made by such a terrible person that it negates the quality of the original art or the original work. In some cases, I get it. Cosby, for example, is a great case because Cosby did comedy uh, in such a way that portrayed himself as kind of a loving fatherly figure. And a lot of his comedy was based off stories that he would tell about his life and about his kids. And a lot of that imagery is kind of tainted now that we know that he, he, he rapes. I could see why his comedy would lose a lot of the charm and value that it previously once had because it's so intermingled with what happened. In the case of music though, I don't know, there's like a way stronger disconnect in my opinion. Especially the song that the article's talking about because it's literally just a bunch of chords and people saying hey over and over again. Like there's no, anybody could have wrote that song. I didn't know who Gary Glitter was until I saw this article. So I, I, I don't know, it's just weird. That's just my opinion though, uh, you can feel free to disagree with that, uh, but one thing that I think is pretty clear here is that they wouldn't be talking about this if it wasn't Joker. The reason that they're talking about this song being used is because it's Joker. Like they would, I, I, I'm so fucking sure that this wouldn't be brought up at all if it was any other movie. I think that's as much trash as I can handle today, uh, so I think, I think we're done, uh, but before we go, I just want to make something really clear. You don't have to like the movie. Nobody is saying that you have to. You're not some SJW cuck just because you didn't enjoy the film that was presented to you. Just as you're not some kind of white supremacist neo-Nazi if you had a blast watching the movie. That's just not how the world works and I think that's pretty self-explanatory. But I'd argue still that a lot of the criticisms that I have seen in the media regarding this movie have been pretty damn vapid and pretty damn malicious and in bad faith. Apparently, it's not getting Oscar consideration also because it deals with controversial subject matters or some shit, which is the dumbest fucking reason I've ever seen for anything not to... Usually, that's the reason why something wins. And Zhao Quinn Phalanx's performance was so good. Like, what, you're just gonna pretend like that's not worthy of, of an award? Like, I don't care about the Oscars, but that's so shit. I, I don't think these are good faith criticisms. You can have criticisms of the movie. It's slow. I don't like the message. There's a bunch of things that you could say that speak to your subjective experience of the movie. But I think a lot of these are just really in bad faith and really shitty, to be quite frank. But again, I saw the movie three times. I really loved it. I had a lot to talk about with my friends about it. It gave me something to talk about, which a movie uh, hasn't really done in a very long time. And I'm grateful for it. And I'm honestly looking forward to seeing it again. It was just so good. So maybe I'm biased and uh, that's, that's, that's possible. But at least you know that I'm coming from that perspective.
if you want a fair critique of the movie, by the way, uh, check out Red Letter Media. I know they don't need my help to shout them out, but their, their uh, review of the Joker was uh, probably the most fair one that I saw. I don't really know what this video was. Uh, this wasn't really a glasses off, but it was definitely more serious than a recap or a normal video. Uh, I called the last video, let's read it. Maybe I'll do something like that here. I don't know, whatever. Search in the Teespring store, Patreon in the description, all that jazz. Thanks again to our sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. Means a lot. And uh, that's it for me. I'm off to kill innocents in the street for no reason.